Thank you again for coming. Uh, welcome to the University of Bridgeport. Uh, I want to start the second session of uh, today's uh, lectures. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Sheikh uh, Mr. Kamal Tutaniani. Kamal Tutaniani. Uh, he's a researcher and a lecturer on Islam. He was born in Brooklyn, New York. He, he was raised in Connecticut. He studied abroad for 10 years with, with some of the leading scholars in the Middle East. He is, curr he is currently a Yale University ELI Whitney student majoring in religious studies and Near Eastern languages. He is well known, as I said, uh, as a, a, a lecturer of Islam and about Islam, and he's also serving as an Imam in Bridgeport Islamic uh, community mosque that we have here in State Street, and uh, uh, a well-known in a well-known scholar uh, in uh, uh, among the Muslims of Connecticut and among the Muslims in the United States. So please, uh, you know, welcome Sheikh Kamal. Thank you. First, we want to thank you all for uh, coming here. It means a lot to us um, that you hear uh, about our faith uh, from us. Um, we uh, appreciate your, your patience and your time. Um, we thank all of those who organized this event, uh, the Police Department of Bridgeport, um, and all of uh, the uh, University of Bridgeport, uh, the ICC. Um, I want to start by, by thanking you also for your service uh, to, to society and, and just kind of uh, relate your service to society, uh, to our tradition um, as Muslims. <coughs> there is a prophetic saying, or the Prophet said, Prophet Muhammad said, the best of you are the most beneficial to others. The best of you are those who are most beneficial to others. And we, we recognize that uh, police officers uh, so yeah, law, law enforcement, police officers are indeed uh, some of the most beneficial people um, in our societies. They, they protect us and they help us um, and we feel safe um, when they are there for us. And um, especially for us Muslims in, in the present time, uh, we especially feel that we need uh, your support uh, because of the uh, misunderstandings about Islam, because of the uh, Islamophobia, because of the uh, the, the difficulties that we are uh, facing um, in the world that we live in, and so we hope that we can reach out to you and, and uh, uh, make friends and, and, and have your support, uh, which means a lot to us. And so again, the best of you, or the best among you, are those who are most beneficial uh, to others. So we thank you for that, we thank you for your service. Um, of course, I can't cover all the topics here, but I'm going to try to cover some of the topics that I thought uh, may be important to maybe remove some uh, misconceptions or maybe clarify some things about about Islam and about um, uh, the, the Muslim faith. Um, and so the first thing, I guess, the, the first topic I have here is violence. Uh, Islam uh, today is, is looked at as a violent tradition, as an extremist uh, ideology, as, a, as a, 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 a religion of terror, a religion that, uh, that, that loves uh, to destroy and destruct um, uh, the world that we live in. I mean, this is what uh, the Middle East looks like. Uh, in our times, this is what the media um, is teaching uh, people uh, about Islam. But if you if you want to really understand um, the religion of Islam, I think we should go to the source of that religion. And and, and I have one uh, Quranic verse. This is a verse that's actually in the Quran um, that kind of I could say I guess we could say removes that idea that Islam is violent or, or helps to kind of uh, teach us uh, the reality of what. Uh, this religion wants to promote. And that verse is, it says here, uh, chapter 22, verse 40, it says here, it talks about religious persecution, those individuals that were uh, persecuted religious, because of their religion. Uh, they are those who have been evicted from their homes without right, only because they say, our Lord is God. Those who are being religiously persecuted. And we have uh, religious persecution that takes place throughout history against Christians, against Jews, and also against Muslims. And then it says here, which is the point of this verse, and were it not that God checks the people, some by means of other, meaning that we have good people in society that stand up for that which is right, or that stand up for justice, that stand up for 
uh, for peace, if it were not for people like that, what would happen? It says, it says here, if it, were, if it were not for such individuals, there would have been demolished monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques, in which the name of God is much is much mentioned. And so if we read this Quranic verse, we, we understand from it that Islam does not support the demolition of a church or a monastery or a synagogue. It's, it clearly says that that's something that's wrong. And if it were not, if it were not for the good people in, in society, then the houses of worship would be destroyed and demolished. And so to, this Quranic verse clarifies for us that Islam is not a religion uh, that believes in the destruction of places of worship, even if they're not Muslim. It's actually an obligation upon uh, Muslim societies to protect uh, places of worship that belong to Christians uh, and Jews. And if we look at the Muslim world um, in, in the present day and also in the past, we see that we, there are churches that exist uh, in Turkey, in Egypt, in Indonesia, uh, in Bosnia, in Syria, in Yemen. And, and these churches and these uh, uh, Christian populations, Jewish populations, live there peacefully in, in these diverse uh, communities, in these, di in, in these diverse uh, societies. And so obviously we have this, uh, this extreme idea today that believes in uh, the destruction of, of anyone that believes in anything that I don't believe in, which we're going to come to later on. So we have a Quranic verse that I hope kind of clarifies that, that Islam is not a religion that believes in the destruction of other religions. We actually believe in, that we could, we could live together in this world peacefully. You can have your faith, uh, your belief, your ideas about God, about your religion. We can also have ours. To you is your uh, religion and to, our, to us is our religion. The idea of, of oppression in the Quran, the idea of, of violence, again, is also found in many verses. Again, there are 6, 000, over 6,000 verses um, in the Quran. There are only a handful of verses that speak about violence. And many of these extreme groups, uh, these so-called Muslims, they, take, they cut and paste these verses uh, in order to fulfill their own political uh, agendas. And many of them are often ignorant. Many of them are not, or most of them are not uh, uh, scholars of religion. Most of them are individuals that have problems uh, in, in their lives. And, and, and many of them uh, grow up in societies where there is war and where there is uh, uh, poverty and, and of course there are many uh, things that kind of um, attract uh, individuals in such societies but um, research has been done that ISIS, Al-Qaeda, these groups, they're, they're not uh, scholars of religion, they're not people who actually uh, understand the teachings of Islam, they haven't learned Islam from an institution, uh, an organization that's, that properly understands the religion, they haven't gone to a university to understand uh, the rulings of, that, of, of a particular religion and for that, and that's one of the reasons that we have these like, extreme uh, groups of individuals. We have another Quranic verse that says clearly, uh, when it is said to them, do not corrupt in the earth, they reply. When we say to ISIS, don't corrupt the earth. When we say to Al-Qaeda and these other extreme groups, don't make corruption in the earth. Their reply is, we are reformers. We are here to reform religion. We are here to, uh, to make peace. So for, from their uh, perspective or perhaps uh, they feel or believe that they're actually doing some good uh, to the world, but where in fact they're doing the opposite. Um, another Quranic verse which this speaks about, you know, this, uh, this uh, corruption in the earth. And so we see here this Quran is telling us that corruption is a negative thing. I think it's not acceptable uh, by the religion. Another verse, uh, and when he turns away, and when this individual turns away, he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals same group of people who read the same book but only decide to choose and pick and, and, and uh, copy and paste the verses that they actually uh, that this fits their that fit, fits their political uh, agenda the prophet clearly defined the, the Muslim the word Islam is, a, is, a, is an Arabic word uh, which I believe should also be translated which is Islam if you go into the Arabic dictionary the word Islam is under the word salam which means peace and submission that's what the word means in the Arabic language and so when we, heard the, when we hear the word Islam, uh, many people have different ideas of, about, about what that means. But if someone were to say to me, for example, what's your religion? I said peace, we'd all understand what the word peace means. And no one would take that word, no one could take that word out, out of context. But because the word is in Arabic, it's a different language, we can often uh, add and, and change the definition of that word. So the Prophet defined a Muslim in an authentic tradition. He said, al Muslimu 
من سلم الناس من يده ولسانه. The Muslim, this defines a Muslim, is one who whose tongue and hands people are safe from. One whose tongue and hands people are safe from. And so if there's an individual who's, who, 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 who's using his tongue to, for example, harm others, to um, using his tongue in a harsh way or to backbite, etc., that person is not practicing uh, Islam. He may be a Muslim, but he's not practicing his religion. And if a person is using his hand to harm others, we know from the definition of the founder of the religion that that person is not practicing uh, of the, the religion of Islam. So Islam violence in America, uh, we see in the news that we, all, we always hear Islamic terrorists and, and uh, uh, um, radical Islam. We hear these words often and they really have an impact on, 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 on us as Muslims living in the country because uh, uh, we often get attacked um, and people often uh, turn against us and we don't feel safe any longer. Um, and, and people also start to uh, misunderstand and have a, a fear of us, what there actually, I hope, should not be a, f a fear from us. And so if we look at the, at the research done about terrorism and about violence, um, according to the Global Research Center, Muslims suffered between 82 and 97% of terrorism-related fatalities over the past five years. And so the people that are most terrorized in the world that we live in are Muslims. ISIS has killed more Muslims than anyone else. al Qaeda has killed more Muslims and destroyed more uh, homes than, than anyone else. So the Muslims are the ones really suffering uh, in the time that we live in. Um, according to a 2009 report published by the Counterterrorism Center at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, al Qaeda, ISIS, these groups, kill seven times more Muslims than non-Muslims. These are facts. If anyone's, if anyone's being uh, massacred in the time that we live in, uh, uh, because of these groups, it's, it's, it's Muslims. And, and it's clear, you ask, you ask yourself, why am I in this country? You know, why, are, why are Muslims coming to America? Why are Muslims uh, willing to, to, to lose their children and drown in the Mediterranean and other places in the world? If it's so good where they come from. If Muslims love violence, Muslims love terrorism, they, if they just stay in Syria. Just stay where they came from. It's all there. But Muslims are looking for a better life. Muslims are looking for freedom of religion. Muslims are, are prepared to take that chance and lose their families to leave the devastation that exists in their lands. And, and for that reason, you have uh, people coming to America because we feel safe here. We have freedom of religion here. We have freedom of expression here. We, have, uh, we can vote in, in this country. In many of our countries, we can't vote. In many of our, I've lived in the Middle East for 10 years, and, I, and I've seen it uh, through experience. You know, you, if you try to speak about religion in a, in a home, for example, in a Muslim country, about Islam, You'll have people come to your house and lock you up. They'll put you in a cell you'll, and they'll just bury you and, and you'll never be seen. I mean, and, and it's, it's not because Islam is, 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 is a violent religion. It's because the Middle East suffers from uh, dictators and oppression and individuals that don't really care about, uh, about, about their, uh, the people that live in those societies. People are hungry for money. Uh, there's lots of corruption uh, in those areas in that world. And for that reason, uh, there's all of this tension. And, and people that live in those societies usually or, or often don't have a way out. You're starving, you're hungry, you have no, you have, there's no way out for you, there's no way to go. Thank God we have American passports, we can travel to Canada, we can travel to another country. Within America we have the freedom to move around. In those countries, in those societies, people don't have that freedom, people don't have that, uh, that advantage. And this often uh, causes uh, young individuals to become extreme, this often uh, creates uh, problems within society that we see now uh, in the world that we live in. And so we, we spoke about the violence, we spoke about the research, and again, if you read the Quran, you see that it's full of uh, mercy, it's full of, uh, it's full of compassion. Yes, there are violent verses in the Quran, we can't deny that. There are violent verses in every, uh, uh, or in, in, in all three monotheistic uh, revelations, you know, the Torah, uh, the Bible, and the Quran. But we can't take those uh, verses out of context. Each of those verses has a historical context to them, which are often, or, or at all times, uh, revealed to that particular society for self-defense purposes. And so if we take, for example, the Muslim, uh, the first, the earliest Muslim community, the Prophet Muhammad and his followers, they were persecuted in Mecca for 13 years. And their first migration was to a Christian country. They went to Abyssinia, to Ethiopia, where there was a Christian king. And the Prophet Muhammad said, there's a, there's a righteous, just, Christian, Christian king in that country. He'll accept you. Go to him. 
So the first Muslim migration was to a Christian country where they found safety, where they found uh, security, where they had that freedom uh, to practice uh, their faith. And the second migration was to a city called El Medina, which was also diverse. There were uh, Jewish people living in that city, there were Christians living there as well, uh, and they were living, uh, for the most part, in harmony. And so Muslims uh, throughout history could live and, and do live in, in diverse societies. We don't believe this whole idea about having an Islamic state uh, where there's only Muslims there, it's, it's un-Islamic actually. Right? It's, it's never going to happen, it never did happen. Muslims always live in diverse societies and interact with other peoples. Right? Islam doesn't believe you have to have a society where you force people to be religious. And I'll come to that as well. And so, um, radical Islam, we, talk, we always hear that, radical Islam. I mean, these two words kind of don't really go together. Right? They're, act, they're opposites. It doesn't work when you say radical Islam. Maybe a radical Muslim, yes, but Islam is a religion, and Muslims are people that are supposed to practice that religion. And so I think it's important for us to kind of um, uh, make a distinction between a religion and a people who are supposed to follow that religion. The people are not always going to be perfect. They're, not, they're often uh, going to be distant from their religion. But if you look at the teachings of that religion, you see that they kind of are, are very different than what we see in the actions of those people, of, of that particular, uh, of the particular followers of that religion. And so to say that uh, radical Islam, I just thought about, you know, talk, thought about this today. Uh, for example, we have democracy, and we, we love democracy, we live in a democracy, um, and we strive for, to have a society where we have this freedom and, and we have these, uh, but once democracy becomes, for example, communism, it's no longer democracy. You can't say it's a, it's a democratic, you know, communist society, or democracy is not a communist. Things that contradict uh, each other. And it's the same thing when you say that, for example, Islam is the radical or violent Islam. It doesn't really work together. It's like saying, uh, de you know, de democracy uh, now, or it's it becomes the same thing here. So when Islam becomes violent or radical, it's no longer Islam, simple. When democracy becomes communism, it's no longer democracy. It, it, that's how it works. And so, yes, there are radical uh, Muslims, but uh, radical Islam, they, they actually don't go together. Muslims living in diverse societies. We've said that uh, historically Muslims have lived in, in, in diverse societies and we continue to live in diverse societies. And we appreciate um, um, living in, in, in American society. Um, and I was born in this country. I'm an American. Um, and, and we really uh, feel at home here. This is our home. We have nowhere else to go. This is where we're born. This is where our children are born. Um, and so we often hear people tell us, go back to your home. Uh, my wife has been uh, spit on. She's been uh, called names. She's been uh, attacked while she was driving. I mean, she's gone through so much. Just because she's a Muslim, um, an American Muslim, who lives in a society where, where there are individuals who misunderstand um, of their religion. And so I, I'd love for you to, to kind of um, feel our pain and, and support us because I think that each, each and every one of you could have a tremendous impact on, on how we are treated um, in, in, our, in, in America, in, the, uh, in our society. Um, so we mentioned the first migration. Um, we also uh, have this idea that, that Muslims try to force others to become Muslim, force people into their faith, which is also something that's, uh, that's, that, that contradicts the Quranic teachings. The Quran clearly says, La ikra'a fi deen, there is no compulsion in religion. There's no forcing people uh, to accept your faith or to, be, to, to accept your religion. And there's a clear verse in the Quran that says, And had your Lord willed, those on earth would have believed, all of them entirely. If God had willed, He would have forced us all to believe in Him. But God gave us free will to choose how we're going to believe and what we're going to believe in. We all feel that we have this freedom uh, to choose uh, our beliefs. And then, and, and then it says, and then, O Muhammad, would you compel the people in order that they may believe? Would you force people to believe? Clearly telling us that you're not allowed to force people to believe. People have the freedom to choose their beliefs. There's also a hadith where it says, uh, nasiha, that religion is sincerity. And so forcing someone to believe in what you believe in is actually not sincere. And one of the conditions of becoming a Muslim is that you accept it from your heart, that you really believe in it from your heart. Us, it's not uh, valid or accepted. The next thing I like to talk about is the word Sharia, which we all often hear in the media, um, which, which also creates a lot of fear um, amongst people in society. Don't, don't really understand that word. I think that even many Muslims um, don't understand the word. Um, and so, again, not every Muslim is a scholar of Islam. 
Not every Muslim is a scholar of Islam. Not every media reporter is a, is a researcher or a scholar of Islam as well. And so they're not always going to be giving us authentic information. We have to really go to uh, a university or to professors of Islam that can teach us uh, about, about what the, the religion of Islam uh, teaches. And so Sharia uh, simply means a revealed law, a revealed law. And so uh, Moses, peace be upon him, he had also a Sharia, a revealed law given to him by God, according to those who believe in him. Uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, also had a Sharia, a revealed law, uh, revealed to him by God. And Muhammad also, we believe, was also received a law that was revealed to him by God. Um, so Sharia, what does Sharia talk about? Sharia talks about marriage, how to get married. Sharia talks about inheritance, how to inherit wealth if someone dies. Uh, Sharia talks about uh, food. Sharia talks about prayer. Sharia, um, Sharia encompasses the entire life of a Muslim, about good character, about behavior, about backbiting, about cheating, lying. I mean, it, it, every part of a person's life is really kind of governed by, by, by Sharia. And every Muslim is responsible to kind of enforce the Sharia in his own life or infor enforce the, uh, the divine uh, law in his own life. But Sharia has five uh, main uh, purposes or five main points that Sharia strives for. So if we look at uh, Islam as a religion and we study the rules of Islam from beginning until end, all of those rulings go back to one of these five principles. This is the, called the five and maqasid, maqasid al-Sharia, the, the principles of Sharia or divine law or uh, revealed law. And again, Sharia is an Arabic word and which means revealed law, but because we live in a society where we don't speak Arabic and we hear the word Sharia, and we have media or people who don't understand Islam or dislike Islam saying that Sharia means that this is going to happen, they're going to take over your country, whatever else is other uh, people are saying. Sharia simply means, I could say that you know the American Constitution is, is kind of uh, based on a lot of Sharia, revealed law, thou shalt not kill, for example, uh, and other religions. So uh, number one, the first principle of Sharia is preserving life. This is one of the principles of Islam, that we want to preserve life uh, as best as we can. Uh, so we have a verse in the Quran that says, if you kill one life, it's like killing all of humanity. If you take one life wrongfully, it's like killing all of mankind. And if you save one life, it's like saving all of humanity. This is also a Quranic verse. So all of the, these, uh, the one, number one, preserving life. Sharia means preserving life. Number two, preserving religion, giving people uh, freedom of religion. Whether it be Muslim, whether it be Christian, whether it be Jewish, people have the right to choose uh, their religion. And Sharia strives to make sure that people have this, this freedom. Uh, number three, uh, wealth, preserving wealth. Sharia uh, strives to preserve wealth. And so uh, stealing, for example, there are laws that govern uh, what happens when people steal or, or what are the consequences of stealing, etc. So we, all, we have these similar laws in our country here, that if people are uh, stealing, there's a, there's a consequence for that. Um, we have pre uh, preserving children. And for example, in the Sharia, the Sharia demands that people marry, for example, if we want to have a relationship between uh, male and female, that that relationship happen uh, through marriage, which is also a Christian and a Jewish uh, tradition as well. Uh, because when we, when we have relationships outside of marriage, we have children that suffer because of that. We have orphans. 7,000 new orphans in Morocco every year. 7,000 new orphans in one country, Morocco, every year. Why? Because people are having relationships, uh, they're having children, and they don't want responsibility. Marriage means responsibility. Sharia uh, encourages that. It doesn't force anyone. If you want to get married, you don't have to get married. It encourages a marriage for the preservation of children, for the rights of children, for the young ones, for, the, for those who are, are weak. Uh, preservation of intellect. One of the uh, principles of Sharia is preserving the intellect. Because what, what makes us different from, from other animals is our capacity to sit in a room and have a discussion, to think, uh, to, to, uh, to reason, right? This is really what makes us uh, special. One of the things that makes us special, but probably the, the greatest thing that the human being has is his intellect, his ability uh, to reason. So Sharia is concerned about the, the intellect of individuals and societies, and for that reason, for example, Muslims won't drink alcohol, or not supposed to. Islam teaches that alcohol is, for example, not a good thing to do because it has an impact on, on the intellect. Or, or, or uh, drugs, for example, because they have an impact on the most uh, precious thing that the human being has. So preservation of intellect. The first word revealed to Muslims was ikra, read. Read in the name of your Lord. Reading, learning, something that Islam encourages, something that Islam supports. 
Um, and then the final, the, the honor, preserving honor, preserving the honor of your neighbor, preserving the honor of your, uh, of your, of your friend, preserving the honor of your family, you know, not taking people's honor uh, by harming them uh, or, or um, in, in ways that, you know, that, that impact their honor. And so, um, Sharia means that, it's revealed sacred law that's built on five foundations that we just mentioned. And um, I have mentioned earlier why Muslims are, 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 are uh, migrating because of the difficulties in those countries, because of the uh, tragedies that happen in those places. Uh, my family is from Montenegro, the former Yugoslavia. And uh, 22 years ago, yesterday, uh, there was a massacre that you might have heard of in Srebrenica. There was a massacre where 8,000 uh, boys and men were murdered, genocide by the Serbian army. And I refuse to call them Christians because I don't believe that they're following the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, a prophet that we also believe in. 30,000 women were raped during those years. Muslim women, 30,000 Muslim women were raped by the Serbian army. Um, and I refuse to call those people Christians because I don't believe they're following um, any uh, teachings of, of the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And so if I could just, I think my time is up, I just want to summarize for you. Uh, when I say, well, how are these people becoming who they are? Why, is, why are Muslims violent? Or why are some Muslims violent in the world? Why are uh, Muslims uh, viewed as terrorists? Um, and there are also other groups. And, and so there was a great imam or a great uh, scholar and a poet who, who said something that, you know, I heard it from my uh, professor at the University of Yale, at Yale University, and it really was uh, powerful. Um, he spoke about religion, kind of summarizing why people, uh, how people misuse religion, how people can benefit from religion. Right? So I don't believe religion is bad. I, I think that, that people often uh, make religion bad. But he said that uh, religion is like uh, a rope hanging in a well, in a dark well. Religion is like a rope hanging in a dark well. And all of us are in that, in that well. And then he said that um, some people, they, they use that rope religion and, and they, they find their way out into the light and other people they hang themselves with that rope and they stay in the bottom of the well and so the people that hang themselves with that rope are, are the people uh, like ISIS like Al Qaeda who kind of misunderstand the whole point uh, of the message which is to, to, to enlighten a person and to make a person better and to make a person uh, more perfected and to connect the person to, to his creator really the, the whole point of religion is to connect us to our Creator. And so I hope that that example given to us by Rumi um, helps us understand uh, why, uh, why people often, um, or how people can use religion to make it beneficial, uh, to, to use it in a, in a way that creates harmony in societies, and how people can misuse religion and, and, and kind of, uh, and, how, and that, that leads to their, to their death or to the death of many people um, in our societies. Uh, again, I thank you so much for, for your time. I hope that I was able to give you something, um, and uh, I hope that you enjoy. Thank you so much. All right, folks. Uh, I think we have a few minutes before uh, Sheikh Ahmed has another lecture. He's uh, he's coming specially for us. Uh, we're we're volunteering. We would like to, you know, to introduce to reach out to you. Once we heard about this from Detective Frank, we said, of course. Uh, in a heartbeat, we'll come and we'll we'll introduce ourselves and we'll answer questions and like as I said before, hear from us, not about us, right? So maybe we have another uh, ten minutes uh, and then we'll take a break. If you have a question to Chef Kamal, please uh, uh, size the opportunity and he's right here in front of you. You can answer any questions. So please, what message are radical? And I thank you for distinguishing between Islam and Muslim. I yeah. kind of just. So what message are radical Muslims hearing from whoever that is allowing them to justify whatever they do or whatever killers or whatever they're doing to say, this is what we're supposed to do? Yes, good question. Well, basically the message that they're receiving is that um, you know, this, is, this version of Islam that we're teaching you, for example, the version that ISIS is teaching their followers, is the only version of Islam, and Muslims have, uh, the majority of Muslims have left their religion, right, they're not following the real Islam, and so um, if they're not willing to accept our version of it, then that means that they are our enemies, 
and we have to you know get rid of them. We have to destroy their uh, places of worship. We have to um, uh, free the land of, of their presence, whether they be Muslim or so-called Muslims in their eyes, or Christians or Jews or anyone else. Um, so basically, they're they're receiving an, an ideology that's telling them that they're they're the only ones that are right, that their version of Islam is correct, and that if they die uh, for this sake, that they'll you know they'll get some type of reward for it. So so that's really what they're being fed. Um, and so, for example, in Afghanistan, they might say, well, you know, the, for example, Russians invaded Afghanistan, uh, and so the, they might say, well, these people are invading our lands, our country, and we have to rid them, and we have to get, you know, fight back against them, for example. And so they may use these kinds of things, either saying that our version of Islam is the only correct version, or we have uh, other uh, uh, societies invading our, our land, and so we have to fight back, for example, and, and rid them, or rid the country of them. That might be some, some, some of the reasons that they... A lot of it's based on ignorance. They're not really these young individuals that are that join these groups. Um, th th there's research th that supports this. They're not uh, individuals that have studied Islam um, in institutions. They've gone on YouTube, for example. They hear some videos. They meet some someone who's also extreme, and 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 they might be offered money, for example, or some other uh, some other benefits. And for that reason, they, they end up joining uh, these groups. So really, we we we're also afraid of, of this of these of these ideas uh, of these individuals in our societies because they, they may come to our mosques and they may try to kind of radicalize you know our youth and so we're also on the lookout uh, f from these individuals when, when, you know, if we do see them we're the first ones to get rid of them we're the first ones to to report them I hope that that, 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 that makes that clear for you. Any other questions, folks? All right, detective. Yeah. Anything to say? Yeah, I'd like to thank, thank you for coming and hearing mm -hmm. your time um, here so us today. Uh, we'll be back at 2 o'clock. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.